Good afternoon. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Ian. I'm Lauren. And this is the bar class specializing in plies and bar-inspired movements for hips and kettlebell presses from various positions for the full body strength. Last week, we pressed heavy bells for lots of reps. So this week, carry up the position, maybe grab that light kettlebell of yours and stay tuned for more presses with Lauren. But until then, the body weight warm up to start with the feet. Take it away. All right. We'll start with those feet as per usual. We'll keep them underneath us in this class. If you want them over your head, join us on Saturday mornings. But for now, they're gripping the floor. Our hips are nicely forward, our butt cheeks are squeezed, and our rib cage is over top. We're square to the front of the room, and we'll gently peel a foot up, ankle and toes in the same line. Next, we'll go double up, and then control the down. Let's march through that for a nice number of four, or two each side here. One last time landing on that straight leg. Come back up, soft landing. This time let's use the toes to point, gently flex around over them, then go back through the toes, up to two points, control the down, other side pointy point, flex round over, roll back through the foot, up, and one last time, I think my mind got distracted, but again for that number four, as we come back up here, don't get distracted. Focus on what you're doing and then come back through. This time we'll go up. We'll land on the straight leg. We'll bend the knee. Hips will lightly sit back. Knee towards over toe. Still nice and stacked. Press through to tall. Double up. Control the down. Repeat again. Knee towards over toe. We will have that light cow tip in the hips or that anterior tip or the tailbone to the ceiling because we want room for that femur to gently slide behind us as we press the knee towards over the toe. Last time on this side, then we'll go up, hold the light balance. Now let's stay high, heels high off the floor. Could you descend nice and slow, as low as you can, but be able to stand back up out of it? Press back up out of that, woo. Now let's put our heels down and try the same thing. How low can you get with those heels down? Knees towards over toes. We might round a little bit at the very bottom, press through to tall, and last one will end on the floor. So we'll send the knees towards over the toes, and then we'll peel the heels up, rock forward, lightly landing on our knees, extending our hips, pointing our toes, and sitting back. Quick wrist on the floor before a little plank activity. So let's land through the fingers, full hand, and then gently sit up in that quadruped position. Our shoulders are lightly pulled out of our ears, our elbow pits are rotated forward, and all of our fingers are on the floor, as well as those first knuckles or those callus lines. Let's lightly pull our shoulders down, and then shrug our shoulders up. One more time, pull them down, that's where we want for our press. Shrug them up, pull them down. Oh. Now, lightly retract them or pinch a pencil between your shoulder blades, and then push the pencil out by sending the blades around the rib cage. One more time, blades pinch together, blades press away. Last time we'll end with those blades lightly retracted and lightly depressed, and we'll finish with three first knuckle push-ups. So with straight elbows, push into the fingers, and then palms land. Press into the fingers, and palms land. And last time, press into the fingers, flick the floor away, shake that out. Let's warm up our splits, and then we'll come back to our first plank. Ooh. Nice. So sitting on the hips here, on those sit bones with those nice straight legs. Lauren mentioned that cow tip in the hips, so making sure that the tailbone is reaching back, pulling those femur heads in, making the load on the core or abs, and not on that low back. From this position, let's just also try our overhead mobility. So take a single arm in that rack position and shrug a shoulder, but then pull that shoulder down and light effort here, arm towards overhead. This will be the hardest position we'll press from later today, but check it in a body weight example first. Shrug the shoulder up, then keeping the elbow stiff, pull, and then grind or groove that pull back into what we call again the rack position. Shake it out and repeat on the other side. Perhaps use the other end to stabilize or just take it off to the side and we'll just shrug once and then pull down. Then with a low effort, either hand open or closed, go arm overhead nice and tight to the ear, then elevate or shrug up, and then armpit that depresses or pull down, and then groove that press back into the rack. 
We'll spend 10 more seconds here in our split. Get nice and comfortable, do a little bit of a chin tuck, and then extend that T-spine or reach your heart forward towards the floor. That could feel quite live on those adductors, so be careful. Take a breath, maybe personalize that shape with a little bit of a side-to-side -side slide or a little bit of a lean. Nothing too crazy here, but have the flexibility and the freedom to go anywhere, but in particular coming up, this strong position in that tall sit. More planks, Lauren, let's see what's up. All right, we warm up this plank tension so that when we go to press, all of our muscles are ready to help us. Let's have our hands gripping the floor. We step back into that high plank position and we squeeze our cheeks, we pull our shoulders down, we brace our abs. Now, without moving, pull the floor together underneath you, oh, rippling through the core, breathing underneath that shield for five, four, three, two knees down. Take a second off, lightly tip your tailbone to the ceiling and gently rock back into that narrow squat position. Hips are pushing back. Now we're going to pull ourselves through back up into that plank. Here we go, pull on the floor, lift the knees up, hold plank again. High tension, this time without moving, squeeze the cheeks, brace the abs and pull your right hand to your left hip. Then pull your left hand to your right hip. Then pull both at the same time, creating that cross pattern for three, two, lift the hips up. Walk the feet or the hands together, breathe. Either fold or hinge yourself up to tall. If you're folding, tuck your chin, stack using your muscles on the front and the back as you get all the way up to tall. Awesome. Ah. So we haven't touched those kettlebells yet, but that's, those sets are coming up very shortly. But first let's go to the bar and just be nice and loosey goose with the hips for our quick drill here. Start by pulling the outside leg of yours up to that ankle position and move the knee towards the midline. Oh. Then move away from that midline out to the side. We'll turn in on the hip, keeping the hips nice and level, and then bring the knee back towards the midline. Your foot connects to that standing leg, and then open to the side. Repeat a little quicker as we turn in, pull across, open, turn in, turn out, and cramp that standing leg for stability and move this gesturing leg for that mobility of the other hip. Repeat one or two more, and then return the foot to the standing leg and hold our first balance here. Sometimes when that balance, the knee will point forward. Other times we'll open that knee to the side, challenge both, then return the knee to the front, toes touch, and then hips go through. I held my balance. Same thing on the other side. You held your balance Long enough or not wrong. long enough? I had my knee to the front. Oh, that's I was okay. distracted both, dancing. Both are not wrong, but just be able to go both places. So pull up to the ankle and hug the midline. Then open up to the side, creating a triangle between the knees and the hips and feet. And then a turn in on the hip and bring it across the body, but avoid a twist and then open to the side. And as you go through here, use your balance aid or test yourself without we're standing on the whole foot, but namely those toes. And as we can, just open up and speed up that nice little movement drill for the hip. One hip's moving, that's the leg that's swinging about. The other hip, super stable. Then return the foot to the ankle and with the knee forward, hold a quick balance, perhaps just open it up to the side and then return to the front, toes that touch and hips that come through. More bar exercises in a second, but first, all right, today, as mentioned, we're pressing from all different levels. We'll start at the tallest level, standing. So our usual press from here, we're over top of our bell. We'll use our hinge, a two-handed pull to that rack position, and a press, and then a pull down. And let's repeat that upwards of five times, depending on how you and your body are feeling today, what that weight is like for you, and that overhead range. That was the last one. Sounds good. Pull the bell to the rack, two hands, place it down, shake it out, repeat on the other side. Hip hinge, grip to rack, inhale, use your up to get up, inhale down. Remember, just like we did in that plank position, we have tension in our legs, tension in our butt cheeks, tension in our core. One last press, pull the bell down and Park. It's a whole body activity to get that bell overhead. Stay tuned for level number two. Full body tension implemented. Here we'll have tension in the floor with the feet 
as well as tension through the core, but not too much. Save that brace for the press. At those feet or the hips, namely here, take that outside leg and tendu or point it to the front. Then with the hip going forward, return the leg back to that first or original position. Then take the leg to the side and repeat the same thing, keeping the knees nice and straight, and then return the heels to touch. Repeating out the back, straight leg, and then close or assemble those feet back, and then one more to the side, point, and then close. This time, we'll go two to the front, and then close, repeat one more front, and close. Now side, close, repeat, pull those adductors. Then back, hip forward, toes back, hip forward, and then two more to the side as we go out there. Then pull up to that ankle. We've been here before on that flat foot. Might we challenge that on that demi point rise? Lauren warmed up in the, warm, in the original warm up there. So breathe, squeeze your butt, then return to those two feet, turn the heels to the floor. Shake out those tendu points, the front, the side, the back, the side for singles, then doubles, and then our balance. It's a straight leg as it reaches front. Point those toes, return the leg back. To the side, same thing, and then return. Hips stay forward as the leg goes back, and the heel leads us back to that first position, and then tendu or point out to the side, and close. Front, repeating again one front. Side, also for two repetitions here, keeping that knee nice and straight, and to the back, making sure that we're using our buttocks there and not that low back, be careful. And of course those knees are straight, or at least trying to be as straight as they can, and then pull off the floor to that ankle, Hold that flat foot balance, or with hands on hips, or light tension on a bar, find that demi or that releve point, hold for a second or two, return back, and then return the heels to the ground. And more pressing time. All right, level number two, we're coming down to a lunge position. So the leg that is back is the leg that's going to have the bell. So let's come on down here. Give yourself some room, set up in a tall kneeling lunge. Front foot is a vertical shin, hips are level-ish. I prefer to have my back toe tucked, but it could be untucked if that's more comfortable for you. We'll still use our hinge to pick up this bell to the rack position. So upwards of five, hip hinge, grip, pull to rack, find stability, press. Inhale on the down, press. Inhale on the down, especially in this press is where I start to feel that off arm really have tension and then keep that core brace, foot rooted heavy in the floor. Two hands on, park that bell. Either stand up or switch legs, or switch legs no matter how you do it. We'll come back down, establish that nice solid lunge before you pick up your bell, check it out. Then hinge, inhale to rack, Hup. one, inhale down, Hup. two, inhale down, Hup. three, Check in with butts and abs. Four, you might have one side that's more stable, one side that's a little bit harder. That's okay. Place the bell down. Nice. Stand up tall, shake it out. Shake level it three out. comes after level two. Can't wait for it. And we'll first though, go to the bar. We are circling the leg again, and this time we'll do on a straight leg first, then a bent leg the second time through. So take a single leg, that outside leg, and point it to the front. Then with those hips projecting forward, take the leg and point it to the side. And then around the back. We'll take the leg and reach it all the way back to the front. And as it returns all the way to the rear, keep the hips reaching forward. And like a key in a lock, turn out of the hip from the back to the side and the side to the front and the hips that go forward to return underneath. Now this time on a single leg. So we'll go down on two feet in a squat, take the outside leg and reach forward. Keep the hip reaching forward as the leg goes from the front to the side, and then the side to the back. And as the leg comes through, we'll end up standing up and bring it all the way through the front. Now keep both legs straight until they reach the heels together, and then bend that standing leg with the other leg reaching back. From the back, we'll go to the side, and the side on to the front, and hips that go forward to bring the leg underneath back again to first. Then pull up to the ankle and challenge yourself there as a balance, or move to that passive position at the knee. The toes point down, 
the hips are level, the knees reaching to the side. Hold for a second longer, and with control, back to two feet, shake and wiggle, cramp those glutes, but let them relax too, and same thing, other side. Straight leg variation first, and bent leg the second time through. So it's that tendu or point to the front, then the hips go forward as the leg reaches to the side. Keep the hips forward as we circle the leg to the back, then lead with that heel forward as it goes all the way back to that front tendu position. Then the hips that go forward and the leg that goes back. The knee is nice and straight. Then turn out of the hip as it turns to the side, and from the side to the front, hip forward, back to the first position. Now let's go down on two for this one, and then change so we have a straight leg out front. Now we'll be staying down low here on that bent leg as we circle the leg to the back and point. And then when we stand up here, the leg comes through and point to the front. And then heels touch, bend that standing leg with a point and then circle out of that hip from the back to the side and the side to the front. Stand up with those heels touching and then start to pull up to the ankle and onto the knee and hold and breathe and brace. And with control, return and we're back to our kettlebell press number three. Kettlebell press number three. This time, surprise, surprise, it's a two-knee kneel. One might call that a tall kneel. Tall kneel. So I like to come down to this via our toe squat, knees towards over toes, soft landing around your bell, and we'll stay with our hips extended. So again, I like to have my toes tucked, but they could be untucked. No matter what, hips are forward, but cages down. Try to create this nice long line as seen better in Ian's profile here than letting that butt stick out behind you as we press. Hip hinge, grip bell, pull to rack hips forward. Hup, one, inhale down, squeeze the cheeks, inhale down, squeeze them, and up. Last two, tight core, tight glutes, and then bell comes to that rack position. Now hips can go back to hinge. Whew, shake it out. Feel that stability. Same thing, second set. Hinge grip, rack it, up to five presses here. All firm has that tension as you press the bell overhead. Use your breath. Keep the hips extended, but keep the rib cage down. Those are two tricky things. Uh, last one. And then we'll pull the bell down. Park it with control, and if you can, rock back to those heels and press through to tall. Ooh. Nice. Level four, next. Excellent. And we're climbing up those levels on those balances as well. Let's check out single leg holds out front and to the side, working from the height of the knee. So my feet currently are in that first position, inviting you to assemble in the same, and pull up to the ankle. And you could stay there, but we've been to the knee, so let's go there again. Now extend one leg out front and it can be slightly soft or an attitude position out front and hold with the foot in line with your belly button center. Then return to the knee and then same idea out the back. The leg is just slightly bent, the hip is still reaching open, safely cramping the glute and then return it to the knee or the passe position. Repeat one more time out front, lengthen out, energy shooting out of those toes, and then return to the knee, and then to the back. I can see Lauren there, making sure that the weight is on the front of the foot. Great ideas there as well. Then return to the knee, and if endurance allows, might we be able to hold that passive position on that demi point, and then return to the ground on a single leg if we can, and then return to two feet. Oh, you switched that up. Controlled dismounts, number one, but can you go up and down on that single leg? Very useful skill, simple, not easy. So here we are again on the first, but pull up. And we're welcome to stay here at the ankle or challenge things up at the knee. Holding for about four seconds here, slight bend, but we're turned out on that hip with nice pointed toes and then pull to the ankle back to the knee. And then open up to the side. Hips are forward. The heel is still on the floor there, but the weight is on those toes as allowed. And then back to that knee position and one more time out front. The sweat is starting. These leg balances take a lot of tension, so practice and perfect as you go back to that knee, opening up in that reverse attitude position one more time, and then find the knee, and perhaps hands on bar, 
or without, hold for a second or two longer, could you go back down on that single leg and then return to the first position? Awesome. All right, level four. Surprise, we've already been in this position today. You guessed it. It's your splits. Awesome. So let's come on down to the floor into our split position here. Adjust the bell as needed. Take your time coming down and the bell will be in the center of your body. So as we warmed up earlier in the split position, I had pointed toes. When I press the kettlebell here, I do like to flex my feet or pull my feet to my shin. I find I get a little more tension in my quads that way. We're going to aim for the number five still. Remember, this is the hardest of all levels. You have a little less to recruit from. So if five doesn't happen for you, no problem. Finish on a good rep. Here we go, first side. Use your hinge a little bit. Press, off arm has tension. Feet pull to shin so those quads can be engaged. We have a little less butt here to help us, but we have those strong abs. One last time. Press, pull down, and park kettlebell. Ooh, Ooh nice. that's a tricky one. That is the hardest one. Take a nice breath. Remember that off arm will really help you here. Hip hinge, grip. <laughs> I said hip hinge, it's just built in. And up, inhale down, up. This is also where that breath comes really into play. play. Pushing off a nice, full, strong stomach, abdomen, I should say. Pull down and park. Ooh. Ooh. As expected, that now, was the hardest. for fun, oh. could you get up without using your hands? No rules, just try to find a way to stand. Ta-da. Nice. Nice. So there is one more set of press as we finish today's practice here. Choose your position. Hey, Keep don't tell them that's in. mine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's okay. mine. We'll all Turn. work on our own work here. We've had that slightly bent leg in positions, but now I'd like to fully straighten it out. But we'll also bend the knees, so it's that fondue exercise. We'll pull up to the ankle with both knees bending, and then both legs straighten out front. And then return to both knees bending, and then straighten that leg to the side or second. Find the back of the ankle as the knees bend, and then a full stretch out the back, and then one more time to the side. But that's kind of a white lie because we'll find that rise and then bend both knees together as we land and then find that rise out front again. Bend both knees as we land and then find that rise to the side. It's returning to the back for the very last time there. Then returning to the side for the very last time there. And now could we hold that leg there, perhaps on that dummy, perhaps without, hold for a second longer and then return to passe could you come back down on that single leg? I saw that, nice job. Back to two feet and our shake. Hmm. <sighs> and I heard that too, size of relief and size of that's a lot of work. We know we're doing it too, thanks for joining. We're in that first position and we bend the knees nope. together. Sorry. Pull up to straight the, legs. <laughs> pull up to the ankle, bend the knees together. Oh yeah, sorry. And sorry. then straighten those legs out front. I had a brain blip. The knees bend together and we'll straighten out to the side. Back of the ankle, straight to the back, nice straight knee, such a hard move, and then out to the side again, and then find that rise. Then bend the knees together and land, and a full stretch on the rise. Bend the knees together on a land, full stretch. Last one to the back, full stretch. Return one more time to the side, and hold. Straight leg, where's the rib cage? Breathe. Challenge your balance, return to the knee, return to the ground, and then back on two feet. There's one more exercise with the bar in mind, and last kettlebell right here. So Ian ruined the surprise. Darn it. I'm but sorry. it's Presser's choice here. Standing, lunge, tall kneel, or split. Pick your position. Do it on both sides, obviously. What's it going to be? What are you choosing? I can only hear one answer. Uh, What's your answer? I'm going to go tall kneel. Excellent. And what I'll go in that split. Come on All right. down low or stay So tall. whichever one you choose, let's get into that position now. Set it up. In your split, you're nice and tall. In your tall kneel, your hips are forward. In your lunge, your feet are planted, square to the front of the room. And if you're standing, root those feet. Wherever you are, use your hinge. Pick up that kettlebell to the rack. 
And here we go. Last set of up to five presses, using that breath, squeezing the cheeks, pulling tension from all parts of your body for one more on this side, and then park that bell, place it down, shake it out. Take a breath, and we'll do the same number on the other side. It's that hip hinge to grip, pull to the rack, up, inhale down, squeeze it tight, inhale down, tighter, more tension, and down. Last two, last one. Pull belt to the rack position, place it down. Hmm. However you are, let's try to stand up with no hands again. No hands. Up to tall, tall. Great presses nice. today. Thanks for joining me through that. And we have one last hip drill to finish up. Whew. And again, this is that center inspired practice. And here we are with no bells and no bars. But of course you can use that balance aid if you still need it. Start with the feet in that turned out or first position. And we'll go down on the two feet as in a squat or a plie. Then take a single leg and reach it to the front. Keep it reaching front and reach it to the side and stretch that standing leg. Then bend that standing leg and return it from the side to the front, keep it there, and also stretch the standing leg. This time as you go down, could you lift it up? And up turns into around to the side. And then around, back to down, and then a full stretch of that standing leg. And for the final time on this side, down and reach away and hold your balance and keep your knees straight and then back to the front and push those hips back to forward. Take a breath and a healthy wiggle in there too and repeat on the other side. So it's down on two feet as in our squat plie and a single leg that reaches to the front. Keep the hip reaching forward as the leg goes to the side and stretch the leg, pushing the hip over that standing leg foot. Then bending on the ankle, the knee follows as it takes the leg from the side to the front Leave it there and stretch that standing leg again. This time as you go down, lift that leg up and up turns out to the side and the turn out to the side gently ends with us tapping down and fully stretching. And the last time returning the leg to the front, knees over toes, reach out and up and over. And if you can do it better, ooh, take a second extra and then push through and finish nice and tall. Mm. Ooh just like that. Woo. So feet belong on the ground in that bar class, but sometimes they get up and over. But as Lauren said, if you want those feet upside down, you only have to wait two days till Saturday. And we'll play with our strength live at 8 a.m. Or anytime in the archive, go back, check out those summertime workouts, check out those basics, like and subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned because in September, we're going back to that semestered approach where we build our skills throughout our six week practice. Until then, website, likes, YouTube, Patreon, and take care. Stay strong. And let's train soon. Have a nice day. Goodbye.